we will head down to the match between Owen Turtenwald and Jerry, T uh, sorry, and uh, Josh Utter Layton. Josh needs to win this week and get a little bit of help if he wants to make the playoffs. Owen needs to have some fun this week. He's already clinched the one seed. He's going to see if he can win with Yisan the Wandering Bard. How long is it going to take Josh to figure out what's going on, I wonder? Yeah, it's Owen's deck is, especially if he plays like a Courser soon here, is going to look like a normal deck for you know, a couple turns at least, you know, depending on when he draws his land. I guess Temple of Mystery is gives it up a little bit. But sure. Josh could lose this game without knowing what Owen's doing because Josh kept a one land hand with a, with a temple, and Josh could not draw another land and just end up dying to Land or Elves, you know, or Elvish Mystic plus Corsair Crucifix. Yeah, the fact that Owen's only other land comes into play tapped means he doesn't get Isan this turn, um, but he gets to play, what, second Mystic? Oh, is he templing and looking at a temple as well? That's what it looks like. No, it's all fine. Like, Josh saw a Vile Blade. Owen saw, I think, another temple. So, yeah, he's his man is in shape. If Josh doesn't, oh, Josh pushed and then missed. <laughs> <laughs> now what? How do you play this if you're Owen? I I mean, normally I, the play would be a Corsair, but Teamer Sabretooth actually just bashes. I mean, your opponent's mana screwed. Getting a Sabretooth out there seems like it's pretty good. Just hit them with the biggest thing you can get down as quickly as you can get it down. Seems like the plan. Josh did find a Temple of Enlightenment. See, Corsair would have hit a land. <laughs> now you Corsair. Now you Corsair. And, yeah. Corsair does reveal a free land this turn anyway. But there's not a whole lot Josh can... Or Owen can do with two lands, right? I No, he's going to leave the Elvish Mystic back to... Keep Sabretooth up, but other than that, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, he does have activating Sab Tabor Team or Sabretooth ready. Josh hits third land. Okay, game on. Do we get we get a real game now? Yeah, it's going to be tougher for Josh, obviously, that he missed his second land drop, but he's got the option to Hero's Downfall, but, you know, Sabretooth's protecting <laughs> all Bones' creatures. Josh could just cast a Foul Tongue Invocation here, gain four life, and uh, kill one of the Elvish Mystics. That's not super exciting, though. So I think Josh is going to keep Counterspell Man up with Silmgar Scorn and Disdainful Stroke in hand. Just yeah. given that Josh's removal spells don't work with that Sabretooth in play, I mean, Sabretooth is a powerful card. It's true. The, the top of Owen's library has now given up the gig, by the way. Yes, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Silmgar so goes for Deathmiss Rafter. So it's playing at main phase to make Josh use a counter before Owen attacks. Owen also is tapping an Elvish Mystic and keeping up two lands just so his Elvish Mystics don't die and he still you know, runs out of Seabird Tabertooth mana. Do you counter this if you're Josh? You're not in good shape no matter what you do. You could counter it. You could Foul Tongue in response. You actually can't really beat the team or Sabretooth. I think Josh, yeah, he's just going to counter it just to keep... Because he doesn't really have a removal spell, he just has to hope Owen does not play a, a morph creature. And then Owen gets to smash Josh down to nine. And leave up Sabretooth, man. He's not going to play that carry adding. Another Foul Tongue. It's not going to get the job done. Well, Foul Tongue at least gives Josh a nice bit of life. So let's see, you got a seven Foul yeah, Tongue. Time? Well, if you go to 7, you foul tongue up to 11, and Elvish Mystic dies, you get attacked down to 4, you need foul tongue up to 8 and get attacked down to 2, but Owen is going to play a Yisan in the intervening <laughs> turn. So, no, I guess it will not do the do the trick. Here we come. Crunch. Bioblade is one of the cards Josh is looking for here if you... If you can Bioblight away the, let's see, again, you go to 11, then down to 4, and then you Bioblight the Sabretooth. Again, if Owen hadn't played another creature this turn, that would be okay, but because he's going to, it is going to be tough. All right, here's the Foul Tongue Invocation. Josh is going to reveal a dragon. He's going to gain 4 life. Owen presumably is going to choose to sacrifice an Elvish Mystic, which he does. But yeah, down to four, and 
Here's Yisong with Sabretooth Mana still untapped. Yisong, Josh, Wandering Bard. And Josh goes to zero here uh, if he casts another Foul Tongue. So that will do the trick. Crazy? Yeah, Owen wins. <laughs> we did not get to see Yisong get activated. We did get Yisong into play. Hilarious. No. Now, I can't imagine what happens sideboarding here. I know Owen's sideboard is like 15 one ofs. Take a look at this beauty of a deck list again. Yeah, can we get Owen's deck list? Fifteen one ofs because you, know, you never know what you might want it. There's just randomly an Ugin. There's yeah. randomly a Gainsay. Just like a stubborn denial, a <laughs> negate, a gainsay, mist cutter hydra, maybe an Ugin. I don't even know if that's the fight you want to fight. Probably no Ugin. Probably not good. So we look at Josh's list. It's uh, I mean essentially this is just a creature swarm deck from Josh's perspective. I would think. Drown and Sorrow sounds decent. Drown looks okay. It only kills Elvis Mystic from what you saw. Ultimate Price seems good. Tasker actually doesn't seem horrible, just because Owen's not gonna, likely to be able to kill it, and you can block in all that nonsense. Ultimate Price, maybe? Yeah, Ultimate Price definitely good. I don't love Thoughtseize against these green decks all that much, and other than that, I mean, Ugin's great. The Dragons are great. Uh, Ashiok's actually pretty good against the mid-range green decks. There's not a whole lot. I mean, Foul Tongue Invocation is not is not really what you want, and you might not want all the counter spells. Owen's deck looks a little low curve. That all makes sense to me. Let's go down to game two. Owen oh, Turnwald messing around and uh, trying to see if he can win with a Yisan deck. Pretty funny. Josh Adder Layton is eliminated from playoff contention if he can't win the next two games. True. Owen going to be the one seed either way. So what is that hand? That is Sagu Mahler, Pelucranos, and Arbor Colossus? Yeah, plus lands, which is not the best hand, but not yeah. the worst. Corsair makes it a lot, a lot better. I mean, he'd love a one or two drop, obviously. Yeah, Josh's course, hand is, is quite good here. Because Owen didn't play a card that Josh needs to ultimate prize, Josh gets to anticipate into a third land to try to play a turn three Ashiok on the play with nothing in play. Which is kind of what you want. Anticipate. Needs to find a land here. This card has seemed a lot worse, more worse than Impulse than I was expecting. I don't know well, how much experience you have with it. It's a playable card. I've played it in a couple different decks and it does... Kind of the thing it says. But yes, if you're used to playing with Impulse, it is much, much worse. All right. Ashiok in the house. Ashiok missed. Which is kind of diff. Wow, it's very difficult to do. <laughs> and here's the morph. Owen goes for the face down Sagu Mahler instead of playing the Corsair there. You can't also oh. press the morph, but you can downfall or bioblade it. And who knows what it is, right? Oh, oh yeah, it could yeah. be anything. <laughs> what did Owen, what did uh, Josh hit with the Ashiok? Golden High. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Golden High. There we are. So, presumably, Josh is deciding which removal spell to use. Letting Owen untap when he could have, like, a Rattleclaw Mystic seems like it could be a mistake. I don't think Sagumal is entering into the calculations. <laughs> but you think the deck that has Golden Hind also has Rattleclaw Mystic? It seems likely. <laughs> well, there's a real morph, a Den Protector. And Josh... Lucros? Yeah, Josh is in pretty good shape here. He's going to be able to use removal spells over the next couple turns to kill all of Owen's cards. I mean, Josh does need to hit a land, but he can put a Golden Hind into play, which <laughs> does tap for mana. Uh, that's awesome. Is that actually the play? It might be the play, right? Put it I, would, I would imagine so, because if you're 
if you had if you get out of Goldenheim, the next turn if you draw a land, or even if you don't draw a land, you can cast Ultimate plus plus Silumgar Scorn. Not that Scorn is like at its best here. Yeah. Ashiok goes down. Golden Hind in play. And then Josh electing to use Ultimate Price instead of Hero's Downfall. Now, Owen, he's up to Den Protector. He's also got a Courser. Colossus is clearly a tempting play here. Use your 5 drop on turn 5. But if Owen doesn't play the... Temple that he can't play two threes next turn necessarily. Let's see. I kind of like just playing the land Colossus here. I think that's what I would lean towards and just hope draw an untapped land to play my other two plays. If you don't get there, that's fine. Also, Josh might be running out of removal at some point. He has to run out eventually. He also gets two shots at an untapped land, right? If he leads, if his first three is a courser. Yep. Yeah, Owen seems to agree with you. Down comes Arbor Colossus. Be out of removal, says Owen. And Josh says, I drew the dragon. Now my Silumgar scores are turned on. Counter spell in the house. But because he used the ultimate price instead of the hero's downfall last turn, he can't do a removal spell and a counter spell. Right. This and this this situation is why I wanted to use the hero's downfall last turn. Right, because if he had ultimate price in his hand right now, he could play two twos. Granted, Josh doesn't know what's in Owen's deck and might have been worried about a random planeswalker or a random multicolor yeah. creature, but <laughs> now Josh has Tumor Saber Tooth. He can even activate it with the Golden Hind. <laughs> Though that would return the Golden Hind to Owen's hand, so right. Right. it's a bit risky. <laughs> Oh, and did hit on the untapped land. There's a chance Josh just chumps the Sabretooth here. And chumps with the Sabretooth to keep up Silumgar's score and then uses Downfall at some later point. All right, Owen's going to lead with Corsair. Now, if you're Josh, do you need to counterspell this? It's not so much that the Corsair itself is a huge threat. It's that you just want to start using these Silumgar scorns. Again, this indicates to me that Josh is going to chump block with uh, Sabretooth here. Or he could actually let Ashiok go. That actually might be better. You just let Ashiok go, and then uh, and then you don't worry about protecting it. Oh, the double block? The double block. All right. That's reasonable. Sure. It's a oh, trade. It works out all right for Owen because he gets to play a Yisan. Josh then gets to downfall it after plushing Ashiok, but then Owen gets to play a Den Protector. Josh does need to draw lands at some point here. The drawing Bioblight was pretty good, too. Ashiok misses again. It's possible Josh wants to downfall. No, you can't do that. Bioblight is uh, is interesting because maybe next turn you can cast Bioblight plus Dig if you use downfall this turn. But Owen has too many cards in his deck that Bioblight just can't hit. It seems kind of tough to use that. You want to go ahead and kill Yisan before it can get activated, though, right? I think if you're, if you're going to kill Yisan, it's right now. I don't think you should wait. Oh, this this stubborn denial is going to be good, I think. Josh is pinched on mana. That's probably a one-mana counterspell, even without Ferocious. Right. I think there's a pretty good chance that uh, at some point, you know, Josh just taps out for a dig and Owen just smashes a, a stubborn denial. Den Protector face down. Leaving up a one Unmorph. Protector. Yeah, leaving up both Unmorph and Stubborn Crown. Fourth land. It's a fetch land, which helps dig a little bit. So the question is, uh, now we hit three cards. The question is, what does Josh or Owen get back with Den Protector here? <laughs> What, like clever clever impersonator? I missed that in the deck list. <laughs> Sagu Maldor seems like one of the bigger threats, but you're pretty vulnerable to Crux of Fate if you do that, which is unfortunate. But Sagu Maldor does seem better than Pelucranos or 
Arbor Colossus. They're all just kind of like big dorks. I guess Arbor Colossus does block uh, Ojitai if you're, which you do know about at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, and looks like deciding what to what to pull back here. Do you go Arbor Colossus? Looks like it. Yeah, Arbor Colossus was his choice. He's the biggest of the dorks. Ooh, speaking of uh, big dorks, here's the Soul of New Phyrexia. Not a card you see all, all that often. Now Owen has to attack Ashiok, right? I would imagine that that's the best thing to, to go after. Josh, not super thrilled to see this old new Phyrexia. You can counter it, but then Ashok gets hit down to two, and you can't he's, cast... He's got to go counterspell dig through time is his line, right? Oh, he doesn't have enough blue. Well, yeah, he can't do both. Can't and do. sold new Phyrexia in the graveyard is still pretty annoying. Yeah, well, it's in the graveyard. Protector is going to attack Ashiok, I'm guessing. Yep, Ashiok down to two loyalty. Owen's got that stubborn denial already. What would be bad for Owen is if Josh just doing an untapped land and could just slam an Ojita here. Which seems to be exactly what has happened. Yeah, and then I think Josh is actually in pretty good shape now because Josh plays Ojita and then Owen, Owen plays, plays Arbor Colossus. Colossus. And then Josh can just downfall the Colossus and attack. And, while still having an Ashiok that's surviving here. Yeah, here's Ojitai. Can't stubborn denial that one. Nope. Yeah, Owen's oh, hoping his Arbor Colossus is good enough, obviously. Well, Stubborn Denial does now stop the Arbor Colossus, or do, stop the hero's downfall. Oh, good point. Josh can cast Dig, but you can't really find anything with Dig in response. So, this, let's see, do you lead with, depends what you lead with, because you Josh could be thinking about Counterspells. It's very, it's very reasonable for Owen to have Counterspells in his deck post board here. So... I think leading with the downfall and seeing if it resolves is probably better than leading with the dig, just because you want to know whether your card is going to work or not. Oh, how about leading with Ashiok down? What did he get? What did he get? What is? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the clever impersonator. Impersonating what? The Arbor Colossus? Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Certainly not the legendary dragon. So, yeah, you cast Downfall. Owen is going to have to Stubborn Denial that. Yeah. Josh has the blue-blue untapped, but he's out of Silumgar Scorns now. He will get to dig through time, but yeah, that Armor Colossus survives here. Owen can't actually use the Arbor Colossus for profit I and mean, he can monstrous it to just be large but can't can't target the Ojita right now and Josh has double dig through time still think Josh is in, in, in a good spot here yeah I mean it feels like the board is stalemated more or less in this very weird way but Josh is just up to dig through time right they've traded 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 Owen has an extra couple of lands in play and Josh has two digs in his hand Rocks downfall are amongst the options some lands Ugin's a little awkward on five mana but crux and downfall are both pretty good here do you consider taking land you just take crux downfall 
Yeah. You don't have time. That'll buy you enough turns. And, and Josh already has the temple in his hand that he drew for his turn, so th yeah. this is going to be pretty good. Yes, yeah, Isan deck's been putting up a pretty good fight in this game. It has, but Josh has had mana troubles two games in a row. If Josh doesn't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how the games end up looking like. Yamamaiko is definitely not the draw Owen was hoping for. Can no, he attack? Oh. You can trade Colossi, but then you're then you just get attacked by Ojitai. Even, but if you don't, then I guess you can. It's not a trade because you have monstrous, but right. But it, still, if you attack, you just let Ojitai hit you. The fact that Owen has no cards in hand now means Josh can just cast this downfall. Basically, no, no, no fear. Yep. Oh, that's a good point. Someone in the chat mentions there's a soul new Phyrexia around, so Owen can actually use that now. But this forces Owen to do that. The only difference between do doing it now or doing an upkeep is you don't really want Owen to get to attack with an indestructible one, so. Mm -hmm. Josh now casting a dig for time. Meanwhile, we got some news for Brian Kibler fans out there. He is up a game. Trying to avoid last place. Trying to uh, earn himself a spot in the next season of Standard Super League. Yeah. Once you start chaining dig into dig, it gets pretty tough. Like, oh, Owen is not just dead here, but he's not progressing the board. Ooh, that does help. Whispered Elemental is definitely a card. Looks like our game might be stuck here. Since oh, I, well, Owen had a whisper elemental and <laughs> yep. uh, it, it probably hasn't just vanished. Yeah, we can see that the hands are moving, but not the gameplay itself. So we will tell them to pause. We'll get our game updated for you. Sorry about that. Yeah, Owen up a game. Brian up a game. Those are the only games that are finished so far. Josh certainly looking very good here. It seems like this one's going to game three. Yeah, I, I, I would say that uh, Josh is ahead. I mean, again, he's casting digs. Owen's not doing anything. The, I mean, that's the reason that Esper deck has been good the whole time, is that dig through time, once you stabilize, dig helps you find, or rather, it helps you find answers to stabilize. Once you stabilize, dig into dig plus a spell is really, really tough. Owen is trolling Josh, accusing him of getting lucky, but laughing about it. Pretty funny little matchup we got going on here. Sounds like uh, Paul, and Paul and Andrew Cunio still in game one. That matchup is uh, Black Green Constellation against, what's Paul's on the Five Color Dragons this week? No, he's on the Obzon Megamorph this week. It's Brian who's on the Five Color Dragon Megamorph. Right, and... Andrew has been playing. I mean, he's he's wrapping up this, uh, you know, the, this league with the deck that he's played the most in this league. I mean, he's played this deck what four times now? Yeah, yeah, this is the fourth one. Yeah, it's the Black and Constellation. I mean, the list looks relatively tight at this point. One whip, two strength from the fallen, the three Eilons, the three Night Howlers, three Den Protectors is still the number he's on. That's the only one that looks weird to me. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'm curious to see how he does against. And obviously, he's he he needs to win as many games as Brian. Is Andrew's plan? If he wins as many games as Brian, then he holds on to seventh place. But if we one of the two of them will be in last. All right, we're back. There's now a Whisperwood Elemental in play, and a manifest for Owen, and it should be Josh's turn, having just drawn a second copy of 
Dragon Lord Ojitai. Yeah, it is less good than the first, certainly, but... A little bit. Here's Downfall, we'll get that Whisperwood off the table. Unless Owen manifested something sick. Oh, jeez. I had no idea what it could be. Just, like, could be anything, basically. <laughs> I want to get a pause and think about it. Make it sweat, all sweat, including Josh. There's not a ton of decisions. I mean, you sack the Whisperwood if it's going to die, unless you have some way to prevent that, of course. But who knows what the manifest is? He may also have not gotten the go ahead and keep playing message yet. <laughs> Two Armor Colossus is facing off. I was not expecting that as uh, the deck list started to trickle in yesterday to see what was going to happen in our last week of the regular season. Yeah, well, not only is it a copy of Owen's Armor Colossus, it's a copy of Owen's Armor Colossus that came from a clever impersonator that Josh stole with Ashiok. <laughs> so it's like. It's like a copy two levels deep. Wow, that's a card. <laughs> Mist Cutter Hydra, and it just means is that... Is it bigger than the Colossus? It can be. How big is it going to be? It looks like an 8-8. Eight eight. It, look... <laughs> it is gonna... unfortunate that uh, it just makes it so Josh has to pull the trigger on Crux, putting Josh ahead by... A dig, a dissolve, and an Ojutai in play, and an Ojutai in his hand, so it's going to be tough, but... That was a pretty, pretty good draw for Owen, right? 8-8, eight, eight, hasty, th threw a dissolve. All very funny. So what, you just chump with Arbor Colossus on tap and Crux? I think so, since you know that's going to happen. I mean, it's kind of a forced play. Yeah, you have to Crux now. Kaboom. Josh gets to Ojutai. And I like hitting with Ojutai before playing Temple here. Sure. I'd, I'd rather anticipate, cast Anticipate, essentially, and then Scry, mm -hmm. because your Scry matters more to the quality of your next card. If you're looking for something specific that turn, you want to Scry first, but this is definitely not that case. All right, Owen. No card. No cards in hand. No non-land cards in play. It looks like the gig is up now. It ten lands playing against Ojitai, Downfall, Dissolve, Bile, Blight, Dig, Backup, Ojitai, Second Dissolve. Yeah, this is one of those where if Josh could show his hand, I'm sure Owen would just scoop. I don't think Owen would. Oh, it is Owen. You, you it is Owen. It, it, I think. I think I would if I were in Owen's spot. But as would I. But o Owen will let Ojutai attack and deal lethal damage. Oh, let's dig again. I mean, Josh is in danger. If he doesn't draw land, he's going to have to discard next turn. <laughs> yeah, that is tough. <laughs> Digging into dig. The thought seeds. Well, you might as well thought seeds. See what you're up Better against. than discarding it, right? <laughs> huh? It's gonna be a swing and a miss, but that's fine. It's good news even. Ojitai hits and hit. Owen was will play this out. He is not a guy to concede early. <laughs> you have to take a land here, don't you? You take ultimate price and discard a bile blight? Sure. Thing is, you don't need two counter spells up next turn. Oh, only one draw step. Yeah, you just want, and you you can't lose to a mist cutter Hydra, even though Owen doesn't have a second mist cutter in his deck. Right. So, Owen drew an Andrew Cunio, a gain say. How crazy is it that they randomly assigned him that name in the original Magic Online beta? Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. And no. It, the way the Magic I thought he chose it. No, he did not choose it. That's why I said it. it's insane. The original Magic Online beta, everybody who was in the beta got 
a random card from Invasion assigned to them. It was actually a word from a random card in Invasion. So you wouldn't even get the whole card name. You just get like the list of words that appeared in Invasion card names went into the shuffler and got dealt out. And he randomly got dealt Gainsay. That's pretty funny. I wonder what happened. Yeah. I wonder what happened to the other people who have those accounts. I mean, I, I imagine they're still around. There's some, somewhere. yeah. My wife randomly got Treva, which she has held on to all these years. That's cool. Yeah, she was happy with that one. I don't even remember what I had. Yeah, I don't even remember. But yeah, it was random names. Oh, we have an update. Andrew Cunio says I beat Paul. I assume that's game one, right? Mm -hmm. That might not be the game. I only see the one update, but uh, double check for you guys. Cunio up a game. Kibler up a game. Neither one of them wants to finish last. Meanwhile, game three here. Owen's already secured the number one seed. Now he just wants to know if he can win a match with Yisan the Wandering Bard in an otherwise Highlander deck. <laughs> Owen's hand is great. He molded a six, and Owen has turn one Elvish Mystic, turn two Rattleclaw Mystic, turn three Nyssa. <laughs> Nice. If Josh doesn't ultimate price on turn two, I guess Josh will have Silimgar scorn, so... But, you know, Owen can play a face-down Rattleclaw. <laughs> Actually, you know, Owen could just... Well, Josh did draw Hero's Downfall, or he had a second Hero's Downfall, so... It's not... It's definitely not, uh, you know, anywhere close to being over in any stretch, but uh, Owen has a very good draw here. Turn three Nissa that doesn't get Silimgar scorned is a pretty big game. Uh, that Andrew Cunio update, by the way, that is the match. Okay, that that's what it sounded Andrew, like to me. Yeah, that is Andrew Cunio through to the semifinals, and that is Paul Chion crossing his fingers and hoping he can hold on to third place without putting any points on the board. Uh, that's also good news for Josh Hutter Layton. A win from Paul would have eliminated Josh from contention, and that's not happening. Only Owen Turnwald can eliminate Josh from contention here in round one. So Owen is deciding whether he wants to play Surak or Nyssa. He'd rather get uh, Surak countered by Silimgar Scorn, I think, but Nyssa is just a much stronger play, and Nyssa doesn't get ultimate price. So I, I, I like, I don't know, I I kind of like leading with Nyssa there, but either way, Josh is going to get to resolve it, as it looks like. So I mean, he does have the, the hasty ability turned on. Yeah, Josh letting that happen, and then... Casting ultimate price on Surak, and then going land go. Josh wants to draw a dragon. Yeah. For sure. Josh could slam Ashiok, but that does not turn out well for him if he does. <laughs> yes, Nissa will have a thing to say about that. And it looks like Kibber, based on the chat, won his match. Aha. Uh -huh. Brian Kibler wins two games to zero. So the battle for last continues. We'll get to watch it play out on camera in the semifinals. And that means Jerry's not picking up any points. So Jerry's now eliminated. That is Jer that is Jerry Thompson eliminated from the playoffs. Came in in fifth in fourth place, five points behind Paul, but didn't pick any up. And so that means that uh, that means that Paul that that's good news for Paul. It is good news for Paul. It means only Brad or uh, Josh, Josh. pass Paul, and neither so, one of them can do it this round. Both of those guys require multiple wins to pass Paul. It's also good news for uh, Tom Ross. I believe Tom Ross has now clinched the playoffs. In fact, and and this turn is good news for Owen since Josh played uh, the Ashiok, so now Owen gets to go Nissa animate Yav my coast attack. Pretty good chance he just hits Ashiok here is my my assumption. I think he's he contemplating the uh, the Elvish Mystic. Oh, he's just yeah. smashing! Wow, smashes Josh's face. Who I guess cares about Ashiok? I guess figuring Stratus Dancer is not a big deal, huh? So Josh can now heroes downfall of the Nissa. But he's unable to kill the land as well. So, but you still have to start by killing the Nissa. You can't, you can't let Nissa get activated again here. 
So Owen's really just looking to, to draw a good threat this turn because Owen's ahead yep. by one threat currently, but Josh has one other good removal spell in hand. And if Owen draws a threat this turn, he can really pressure Josh. Let's see if Owen puts Stratus Dancer into play with uh, Ashiok here. Yeah, up or down is an interesting question. I like putting Stratus Dancer into play, the reason being that uh, if you don't, if you just pick it up, then Owen can just attack it, then it's the Ashiok death regardless. Ugh, oh, Forest is to draw. Owen does not draw the threat he needed while Josh was tapped down. Now the Yavmaya Coast can just go at the Ashiok, and the rest can yep. go at Owen. Yep, that is exactly how Owen lines it up. But yeah, Josh gets to untap with Downfall, Scorn, Dig. But yeah, Owen's Mulligan. He just needed one more threat. One threat that turn in this game, I think, stays very interesting down to the wire. As it is, feels like Josh just turned the corner. Yeah, this is the turn where Josh gets to wipe Owen's last threat, or I guess you can do it when Owen attacks. Probably don't want Silengar scoring up this turn, and you can't cast Dig anyway, so I like just playing Temple of Deceit here. Hmm. I mean, if Owen... You could, cast, you could cast Downfall and Scorn. You just don't yeah, but you don't, have a dra you don't have a Dragon, so casting it as Force Spike doesn't seem all that impressive. Like that. So, Josh could... No, he's, if he had played it on top land, he could have taken six down to seven to cast Dig, but that seems you know, kind of unnecessary. Josh is going to upkeep, cast Downfall, just to give Owen one less draw step at drawing a Counterspell, and if Owen had a Counterspell, having to cast it during his upkeep. Down goes Yavamaya Coast. Death Mist Raptor is the draw from Owen. It's not nothing. He decides he'd rather have more mana in play than uh, bluff with the land in his hand. So Raptor resolves. He gets to chip away with a, for a couple with the Elvish Mystics. I guess Owen has to draw answers to the board. I mean, he should be able to with a dig in and anticipate. But at the same time, he kind of has to, right? Well, Josh Sets is on a two-turn clock here, especially with Urborg in play. He's not really taking pain. Unless he wants to cast Ojita, I guess. But you can cast Dig, you can cast Anticipate. Yeah, you can do both. I kind of like just taking the damage here. There aren't that many things you can dig into that you'd want to use right away anyway. You might as well see what Owen does. And now you're just really... You can dig for a Counterspell, basically. Yeah, or a Dragon to make it so... Or a Dragon to Yeah, yeah. Josh lets the Mystic Resolve, goes to Owen's end step, and he's going to lead with Anticipate first. Basically just looking for Crux of Fate at this point. How about a the dig? Dragonlord Silmagar also does a pretty good job of, of stabilizing here. And because Josh has two digs, he's just going to tap out to dig, assuming that if he draws a spell that costs two, he can uh, cast that on his next turn. Crux of Fate would be a hit. I mean, lots of things are good. Crux is probably the best. I wonder if Crux is better than Dragonlord Silumgar, because Silumgar can take the Death Mist Raptor and block the you know Infinite Elves. Hero's Downfall Temple of Lightman is not what Josh is looking for. That that I can tell you. Uh, kind of a swing and a miss. Oh, Bioblight's not bad. Versus three Elvish Mystics. Well, Bioblight is pretty good. That's what Owen gets for putting multiple copies of cards in his deck, right? <laughs> The, high, the almost Highlander deck getting destroyed by Bile Blade here. There's no justice. Yeah, down go three Elvish Mystics. Hero's Downfall can take out the Raptor. Although Josh might prefer to leave up Silver jo Score. Josh could... It's kind of interesting because if Josh taps out to like dig now to play around a Counterspell, then... Uh, Owen can just draw like a 
a Surak from Josh's perspective. We of course know that uh, that Sur Surak is, is 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 a one of so. <laughs> Save me, son. The Wandering Bard would be pretty good if I would ever got to activate it, but that doesn't seem. This well. isn't the matchup for the Wandering Bard. It. This is a matchup where you're kind of looking at the stats of your creatures and what they do if they interact with a removal spell, and Josh has just all removal spells. So, I like waiting till Owen attacks. Yes, if Owen draws like a negate or something, then that's a little worse for you, but you really can't lose to a Surak or a, like... I guess Owen only has four mana, so that actually limits what he can play significantly. There's the crux. I like... Yeah, I like just casting Dig here. If you, because you want to find a Blight or something to kill that that Yisun, you don't really want Yisun to get activated if you're going to have to kill it anyway. I mean, I think you would spend a Crux on it, wouldn't you? I'd rather just cast a Dig than Crux. You can just Crux and kill Yisun plus whatever it gets generally, unless it gets up to higher numbers. Once it's at higher numbers, it starts getting things that are resistant to Crux, but the ones and twos aren't going to be. Fair. Ugin is amongst the targets this dig he's on seven mana Ugin is a good finisher doesn't yeah. count for Sylngar scorn though I don't know ah, I, uh, kind of a flavor fail there how can the spirit dragon not be a dragon what else has he got no bio blight and he's gonna take oh yeah Ojitai does not take the Ugin but his Silumgar Scorn is now a hard counter. He's got a Bile Blight to kill Yisan. He is going to do that main phase so that Yisan never gets active. And now Owen gets a turn where Josh can't counterspell, but Josh is holding a Crux. <coughs> and Josh knows that uh, like a Surak, for example, again, another card he's seen, would uh, would not be lethal because you wouldn't have uh, Ferocious or... Yeah, formidable rather in order to attack. So and only four lands from Owen, so it's not like he can sink a bunch of stuff into a miscutter Hydra. I keep telling Paul in chat that he's been eliminated that Brad won his match, but <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're holding we're holding Brad and Tom. We don't know the results of their match except Paul. You have been eliminated, so you can stop watching <laughs> if you want. <laughs> All right, Josh Everlate not interested in being eliminated. He stays live. Looking like a Game 3 victory. Couldn't find the lands in Game 1, and Owen beat him up pretty quickly. Game 2 and Game 3, Yisan put up a decent fight. I mean, the Yisan deck in Owen's hands. It felt like, you know, they were. it took a little while for Josh to take control of the game, but at the end of the day, this Esper Dragons list, just kind of in a different class. You know, I like that people showed up with a lot of cool decks during SSL, but they got pretty punished for doing so. The The... The, the, the decks that strayed from the beaten path, well, they got beaten. <laughs> so it is a... Uh, I think that's more of a thing if we were to run this like right after a Pro Tour or right near the kind of like a set release because mm -hmm. then there's a lot less uncertainty. In, you know, given you know given uh, the how the format is, I think that there's definitely room for innovation, but trying to make whole decks out of... Like new decks out of whole cloth has, is a little tougher. Like yeah. something like the five color dragon megamorph deck is definitely a new deck, but yeah. that's less different than the red green, you know, uh, Conifer Strider Team or Battle Rage or Blue Green Yisan deck. Certainly has been fun watching him try, though. Oh, Hats off to Owen for trying something something sweet. He's safely into the playoffs. That's where Josh Hunter Layton wants to be. So Josh wins the match two games to one. It'll be Josh playing against Brian Kibler in the semifinals as Kibler tries to stave off last place. And Josh tries to make a run at the playoffs. The other side of the bracket, uh, we can pull the bracket up uh, if that's handy. Uh, it'll be Andrew Cuneo playing against the winner of the last round one match, the one we held for you guys between Tom Ross and Brad Nelson. So we're going to see Tom and Brad. And at this point, Paul really, it's funny the, the rooting that's going on. <laughs> Kimber really wants Cuneo to lose. Yes. And vice versa. And then Paul really wants uh, Brad to lose, though at this point Paul's already lost, so Brad can't can't root against him. <laughs> <laughs> that already happened. <laughs> and then 
Uh, Josh has outside shot of time with Paul. Is that also correct? Or... Say again. Do, do, do we, are we live for any t- for a tie between Paul and Josh at this point? Uh, let's pull up the standings. Josh so, with thirty five points would get to eighty. So Josh, if he wins out, will pass Paul, and he can't tie with him. He cannot be tied with Paul. Brad can be tied with Paul with two wins. Right. That's basically yeah. Paul needs Brad to get one or fewer win, and Josh to get two or fewer wins. That's Paul's rooting interest. And Tom no longer has a uh, has a dog in the fight. He's going to make the playoffs. He cannot be passed by two people. Now, so there any the one tie scenario that's left is if Brad loses the final to somebody other than Josh. Because if Brad loses the final to Josh, then Paul and Brad wind up tied for fourth. Yeah, and Josh is just in. And Josh is just in. If Brad loses the final, however, to Brian Kibler, then we have a tie. We have Brad and Paul tied. And Kibler ahead of Cunio. Nice. <laughs> Brad posted in the in our, in our Skype chat that he won his match. <laughs> 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 and Paul's like, stop. <laughs> Our trolling is real. <laughs> the trolls are coming from inside the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told Paul the tiebreaker is pro club level. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the people he's looking at, uh, you know, Brad and and I guess Brad is the, is the only one who could literally tie with him. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Chad is suggesting a burrito eating contest as a tiebreaker. Can the can the commentators participate even if they have nothing to win? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say yes. I'm hungry. Why not? Yeah. See. Uh, so we are getting set up. Uh, the last round one match will be between Tom Ross and Brad Nelson. Uh, let's look at their deck lists. Actually, 